days that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Yeah, to read that for us. This is just chapter two of Titus. Uh, two one. But speak those things which become sound doctrine, that the aged man might be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, and patience. The aged woman likewise, that they may be, and all the aged women likewise, that they may be, in behavior, as becometh holiness, and not false accusers, not giving too much to wine teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Young men, likewise, exhort to be sober-minded. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works, and doctrine showing uncorruptness, uncorruptness, Gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters, and to please them well in all things, not answering again, not forlorning, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God of our God, the doctrine of God, our Savior in all things. But the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. <clears throat> Teaching us that denying ungodliness, worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that we that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise you. Sound like me, Bishop. That's a, he just <laughs> that sound doctrine. But Addison, that doesn't sound religious to me. Not, not, not a lot of it doesn't sound religious to me. It, it's just basically saying, live, you know, teach people to live, you know, soberly and and, and don't be a false accuser. Uh, uh, don't, don't, don't do, don't do, and doctrine showing un, uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. You know. There's obedience in there, right? There's, there's obedience in there. The part of the wise man, I like this. Hey, here's one. By fact, this one of the movies, right? <laughs> About a bear, your husband. <laughs> but, 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 with the exception of that, uh, this is this is this is the sound doctrine he's talking about teaching. We, we think it, we think it yeah, it's sound doctrine. The scriptures for that purpose, right? Yeah. So, but what? What? Yeah, I, I can. I, I. I mean, Unicef and yeah. um, what's these other agencies that are out there? Um, they all have good doctrine. I mean, if you look at the commercials for the the hospital where the children go get treated for no, you know, no money, right? Those apparently they look really good. They're great institutions, and they do great works. And their focus literally is not the Lord. Well, well, well look, look, I know that I'm trying to say to live my faith and I'm talking about being to teach this doctrine, right? Some yes. of these doctrines are suddenly yeah, taught in, our, in, in, in Israel Academy, uh, yeah. in but, Officer's Corps. <laughs> and they do. I mean, legitimately speaking, any good doctrine is going to be based on, on kingdom principles. That's just the reality. I think so. I think you're right. right. Anything aside from the kingdom don't work nowhere. I mean, it literally doesn't work. Right. So, but there's an element of being in the kingdom that's a necessity in order, even for the principles of the kingdom to, 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 to manifest. You have to have the power of God working in and through you 
because you can't comply with that standard. And it was proven in the Old Testament. We ain't got it in us. Well, I think so. I, aside from even knowing this stuff, if Christ is not working in us, we're not going to be able to pull it off. Yeah, but I, I think we're talking about the fact is that we're, we're not denying that. I'm saying so, as we live, right? As right. we walk, we, we don't necessarily have to sit there and, and, and this, you know, if somebody asks why we walk in, in a sound doctrine, then we can tell that. Because, like I said, Jimmy said, when is it appropriate? Sometimes it's not a, appropriate to come out and say, repent for the kingdom of God is, is at hand, right? Uh, uh, you need to get saved. I mean, it may, it may be appropriate times not to do that, but it's but it's not. It's always appropriate to live a sound walk, a sound doctrine. That 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 somebody asks how do you manner of living, they may inquire why you walk this way. I can only walk this way under the power of God. I can only do this because of Jesus Christ saved me. I can only do it because my mind is being renewed by the word of God. You see what I'm saying? In other words, like I think I think that was you 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 muted bishop. That's what I'm thinking is that the uh you, you say I said bishop because you say I'm muted. Let, I saw let, me let me translate something for you. Now, now I didn't I didn't buy it, I didn't mention the word obedience just by coincidence. Uh -huh. <laughs> recently in my study come to realize that faith, hope, yes, sir, love, uh huh. The word of God, and what I, I'm very particular about what I mean by the word of God. I don't use the word of God loosely anymore. Yes, sir. When I say the word of God, I am not talking about, I am not just talking about scripture. Okay. Alone. Yeah. I'm talking about the actual voice. I'm talking about scripture, but but I'm talking about scripture in a voice fashion because I believe there is something in speaking that cannot be captured on paper. Woo! Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. That there is something in let there be light that you can write down. Because let there be the light cause some stuff to happen. You can write that on paper and it may or may not. Well, that's all different. <laughs> but, but all of this, all of this is, is aimed toward obedience. Because in the garden, what threw this thing off track with disobedience. Mm. And in, 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 in Jesus coming, his whole life is characterized by obedience. Yes, sir. So yeah. that Paul picked it up and said, by one man disobedient. Yes, sir. Come on. <laughs> Everything oh, me me so right. your faith, hope, love, all the other gifts of the spirit, everything that God has given, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, all things that pertain to life and godliness, all of those things are given to you as a means of bringing you to a place where you will obey God. Woo, wait a minute now. Okay. If you will obey God, it doesn't matter what the cost is. Uh-huh. Come on. Obedience. Mm. You see. Mm -hmm. Well, God is obedience, for, there, there obedience. is no cost. There huh? is no cost. If 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 <clears throat> if you're obedient to God. There is no cost because Jesus has already paid the cost. There is just the blessing well, in, in my mind because what 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 is if God tells you to do something or requires something if He puts something in you, then He is He's going to provide the provision the power or the re you know the resources whatever is required to complete that so what what cost is there other than obedience i got one for you i got one for you i got one got myron's name on it okay let's say you go home this afternoon you and your wife go up to sam you're in sam you're doing some shopping you see something you want you have to run across a white guy and you, the, your wife busts into him, he turns around and slapped your wife and spit in her face. Here's a cost for him, <laughs> not for me. <laughs> That's a cost for you. <laughs> no, there's a cost for him. That's what Jesus is trying to get up when he, he's trying to tell us when he says, if any man come after me, uh -huh. let him <laughs> deny himself. <laughs> Because the cost is going to come immediately behind it. There is going to be a cross for you to take up. Woo. And the cross 
it, last time I checked, the cross is, has a particular purpose. Yeah. It is intended to kill something, to put yeah. something to death. Right. Yeah. And in this case, to torture it in a very painful, agonizing way. He's asking you to submit to the kinds of things that when people wrong you, mistreat you, you don't rise up and let your flesh control you. I'm asking you to deny yourself so that the Father can control you by his voice so that you obey him so that in the end, though you may lose something personally, you're willing to make, take that loss sacrificially in order that the Father might be glorified in you. So persecution is going to come to us, but that's the cost of following Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and what you were saying earlier about the word, that word is dynamic. It's not what was written in the book. It's what he's speaking to you immediately. So he may tell you to kick that guy in the groin and beat the heck out of him. Because a man who does not provide for the needs of his own household is worse than an infidel. And does your wife need your protection? Or are you not to put there as a covering tour? Or you might stay back away from him and do nothing. But whatever he tells us in that instance is what we have to obey to. And I think that's where the sacrifice comes in. I might not want to do a certain thing, but the Lord's going to have me do it. I don't know if the sons of God wanted to kill the babies when they went into Canaan. But I know they were given the commandment to kill everything. And that we have to look at the nature of who we are. And we're not, quote unquote, always go benevolent beings who are extending our hands and, and, and gracious, you know, sharing and caring. We have in the past been a murderous, brutal people. Yeah. And who knows what it means he will rule the nation with a rod of iron. I think that key word for me, or my takeaway from what P. Lee said earlier, was obedience. If I'm walking in sex, if I'm walking in faith and I'm walking to, truly in faith in God, I'm obeying what you're telling me to do. If you tell me to take your head, then your head going to roll. And, and, and I think that that's where sometimes we have to move away from our judgment. Now, all the time we have to move away from our judgment. Well, I, all I'm saying is if obedience has to do with hearing, you're not free to take any action outside of what he says. Amen, man. And this is what it means, means to walk, to live by faith. Yeah. To live by faith means, when I went back to the verse in Hebrew in, in Romans chapter 10, it said that faith only, faith can only happen if you hear something. Amen, man. Woo. Amen. Amen. You, you, you know, and, and oh, yeah. when I said I hated religion <laughs> earlier, that's this what I, not I, I, hearing. This is a hearing by the word of God. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so, if I'm doing something religiously, so I'm doing it because I read it. You know, he said, giving it shall be given unto you. Or if they ask you, give it to them. And I lived that life. I lived it. I literally lived that. But then I read the scripture that said, care not thy pearls before swine, need to give that which is holding to the dog. Well, which one am I supposed to follow? Would the one that you hear. That's what I'm talking about. So, From God. You know, you, you, you study to show thy self approval. But your faith is by what you hear. You so hear. when you hear God speak his word, then you act on that. Oh, God. Yes. And, uh, and yeah. that is the bottom line. Amen. I mean, the word says his sheep hear his voice. Yes, sir. I, I, I think we were just sometimes we had the wrong idea who we are. and We were given that idea, I think, to the, the way that we were taught the scriptures in slavery. Because it was communicated to them to intent to keeping them docile and keeping them under the control of the slave masters, which had its backwards way of really protecting them. But we talk about I'll talk about that later. But Christ was not a docile or you know stagnant kind of a personality. He was in people's face. He lived the truth. He responded in truth. And most of the time, you get in trouble when you start speaking the truth. Mm. People don't care nothing about the devil, don't care about you lying. He is a liar and the father of it. So as long as you lie, as long as you're politically correct and everything, that don't go bother him. But when you start to speak the truth, this is when it gets to be an issue. And that truth can't be my truth. But my truth may be far away from God as east is from west. But when I begin to speak the things that God has spoken or is speaking, then the truth is made manifest. And I think that's when it's going to be most effective. And we're going to really start to experience the persecution at that point. 
Well, you know, I think, I think to, to go back to this, just, <laughs> just to make sure we stay a little focused and, and maybe we need to pick this up even again, Bryce, and it sounds like to walk by faith, to live by faith, maybe we need to def define that even more for us as well as those who are here, right? Maybe we don't have it. Maybe we don't have it all the way. And maybe that's what the church is. That's the whole purpose of the church, right? Being led by the by the spirit, spirit of God. By the spirit of God is to what does it mean, Bishop, to walk, to live by faith? Because, but as we gave the first definition, I was using you and I talked about was the live by the word of God. We're really based on what we just talked about is living by hearing God's voice did not necessarily mean it came from the scriptures, but it came from God, the revelation that he gives to you, right? Yeah, but it should line up. It will line up, yeah. You know, um, and, and, and that is, that, that's what I was, was, was alluding to with uh, Elder Johnson when he was, you know, uh, the dueling scriptures. Okay. You know, so you go by what the spirit speaks to you in that situation or circumstance. Yes. And, and, and that's why we have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you know, because he's always speaking. Amen. And we're always hearing. But are we listening? And that is the key. Um, faith is, 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 is a fruit of the spirit. So we all have been given the measure of faith the moment that we receive. It took faith to receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So it took word to, to be saved. Yes. So, and we heard that. We heard it in our spirit. We heard the spirit saying all is well you know and 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 i know my experience was it was it was so tangible that i had to tell somebody come on i was on fire uh -huh. i mean i was like there was there there was a a a connection there was a joy there was i couldn't contain it hmm. and uh but that was because I heard that. Yeah, now, I've been going to church, you know, from as far back as I, I can remember, recall as a child. But I can remember being saved. You know, there was a difference than just going to church and going to Bible study, you know, Sunday school and you sitting in there and, and, and the word being preached and everything. But then... And, and it, the purpose of it was to be saved and to, to perfect. But the moment I got saved, man, there was something. Yeah. That was something. I heard something. Uh -huh. it, go ahead, Bishop. You know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to be critical. What, what I want you to understand that is that when the gospel is being preached, <clears throat> we're talking about now. Uh, on the day of Pentecost, uh, Peter quotes Joel and called the testimony of Scripture according to Joel to be brought before the people in order that he might make relevant the truth of who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to me that, that the Spirit of God can take a man and use his voice to speak God's word. Yes, sir. So that what is being said now is not originating, is not man's Amen. source. He Amen. is the instrument. Amen. Right? Amen. But he can take the record of the reality, the documented record. Because see, there are people, that's why we have so many denominations. That's why we have so many interpretations of scripture. When you pick up the Bible and read the scripture and you're left to yourself to interpret it, you come up with a meaning. Yeah. <laughs> and then we get yeah. 
Baptist and Pentecostal and yeah. Baptist, and we get all yeah. this stuff. But it ain't but one truth. Woo. And what is see, what is inherently absent in there is that they not heard anything. Yeah. Because yeah. the Spirit of God is one. He will never say anything that contradicts what Jesus says or what the Father intended. Is that one too? Yeah. And so if we're going to avoid all those pitfalls of getting deceived and lured out there and, and, and coming up with what I call man-centered doctrine. Okay, okay, okay. It's our interpretation of what we think that God meant. Mm -hmm. What is boy again is, this, is what Paul in, in, in Ephesians chapter 1 said called the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him that ye may know. Yeah, but the eyes of your understanding have been enlightened that you can know what God intended. Right, oh, right. That's the only way that we get that uh, truth. But all of this is aimed at one thing. All of this is aimed at obedience. Obedience. Uh, uh, faith is walk by obedience. Faith is aimed at obedience. Love is aimed at obedience. Hope is aimed at obedience. Gifts are aimed at obedience. Uh -huh. We serve him as though he did. And I think that's the one thing that many have not resolved in their heart is that the God that we serve, that Jesus died and is resurrected. We're not serving a God we got to figure out. We got one that's sitting right here at the table with us right now that we we serving a man that we can talk to. Yeah. And we have to get accustomed to the methods that we interact with him on that level. And I think that's where we're growing in and the studies come there to dispel doubt first off. So when we hear his word, we act on it with, with faith, in faith. But the first thing that I had to really settle in my heart is that this man rose from the dead and that he's alive right now and he's talking and speaking right now. Right. So, so the stuff that we look and we read in the scriptures and P. Lee brought this up several months ago and I remembered it because I didn't believe it when he first said it. It was, uh, he says, this is what he told them. What you're reading in the book is what he said to them. What is he saying to you? You know what I'm saying? He's saying the same thing. <laughs> it's in the book. But the reality of it is, is that's, a, that's the record of their testimony and their interaction with the Father. We have our own testimony and interaction with the Father. Right now, the book Hopefully. Written, it's been, yeah, that book should be, Wilbur's book should be being written at this very moment. Well, it said you're living the principles. Right. Yeah, so there, there, there's, man, we, we serve living God. We serve a dynamic right here, right on time, tell you what to do right now, God. And that's the part that it has taken me 63 years to really embrace. You know, I knew the scripture, and I could quote scripture you all day long and quote it at the wrong time in the wrong season, saying the wrong <laughs> thing. You know, turn the other cheek. Yeah, why? Because they said that. Give it, it shall be given unto you. If they ask, give it to them. He's standing going, like, why did I just get that guy of money? He knew he didn't need it. But I didn't understand that this time, I don't always say no, what year to my kids. When my kids asked me for stuff, it was a lot of times they heard from daddy himself. No, I ain't doing it. <laughs> so, so why should we expect that God gonna tell us? Yeah, I want you to do that every time we ask for something. He's not a mic machine. He's not pre-programmed. He's operating in accordance with the need for that moment. And when we approach it from that perspective, then I think we get those results that we anticipate. Because he'll tell all how many of us are here? Two, four, six of us right now. He'll tell all six of us no at the same time. Or he'll tell two of us yes and the other four go in another direction. Right. But it's, well, it's yeah. him that's doing it. Well, you know, I, 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 you are absolutely right. I, I mean, you are absolutely right. And just to add to that, I'd like to say, kind of piggybacking on what uh, Lee said in that it's amazing that that word obedience means to, to hear. Amen. Well, <laughs> it means to hear. You know, just like the Bible teaches us that there's only one mediator between God and man. There's only one mediator, that's Jesus Christ. So, so, so you know what, it stands to reason that if I'm not hearing from him or I'm doing something that I didn't hear him say, then I'm walking in disobedience, plain and simple. I don't care how good it is or how good it made me feel or how effective I thought I was with it. If I didn't hear it from him or I wasn't under his listening, so to speak, which prompted me, then it was disobedient. And that's hard to say sometimes that, oh, that right there, that's disobedience. Even though on the, on the outset, from looking at it, it might have looked like the most spiritual, godliest thing a person could do. It could actually be disobedient. And that's, 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 that's mind-boggling. Yes, sir.
So the Christian. church should live by being obedient to the voice of God. Amen. So in other words, that to walk by faith. That's faith. Is to walk by obedience or walk by hearing the word of God, the voice of God, being obedient to God is to live. Is, it means living. And you know what? It, 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 it's living. It's not just like right now. My father has been dead uh, about five years. But I tell you, in situations, certain things, circumstances, I still hear his voice. Mm -hmm. I still hear him clear as day. And it governs a lot of times my direction because of the fact that I still hear his voice. Interesting. In those well, situations, because he, not that he's speaking, I don't believe in ancestral worship and folks speaking from the dead. I'm saying the method, the teachings, the principles, the conversations that we had exactly. about different situations. Right. And when I'm faced with certain things, I still hear his wisdom or his direction or his position is what I'm saying. I don't want anybody to get that twisted. Yeah, yeah. I understood. Because you can look back and it, you, it's kind of like a flashback of a conversation or, or a principle that he taught into building your life. Uh, but but I think what, what brother you asked a question not long ago a few weeks ago where you said would you give up everything if 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 uh, God I think you say would you give up everything for the gospel for the kingdom but I think we're talking about it would you give up everything if God at least my brain was saying if God says hey I want you to give this house away I want to give this RV away. I want to. I want you to move to Texas. I want you to, to go to Baltimore. You know what I mean? In other words, God. There's other things outside the scripture where God is giving directions to. Because as I move, I may go to the left or go to the right if I'm trying to be obedient, living my faith is believing God is directing my path. Now, in real time, right now, the one writer said, "This is written that you might believe." And this was near the end of the book. Uh -huh. He was saying that what he had put in, what he had added to that collection of, of, of writing was that you might believe, uh -huh. that you might follow, but that you might first off believe. And, and, the, and the scripture says, he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Seek he him. who comes to him must first believe that he is. Uh -huh. He is the reward of those who diligently seek him. Our heart, my hard part was coming to the real uh, realization that yeah, this man Jesus he ain't dead no more. You know, I, had to, I, I did all my studies over half of my studies was just to get me to the point where I'm, I'm convinced he up, he's somewhere. Right. I don't know if, if the book say he with me, but I got to prove that part. Still, I'm working that right. Yeah, yeah. At some point, I begin to believe not only that he rose from the dead, but now he's sitting right here at the table with me right now, listening to my word, hear my thoughts before I even get. Uh huh. <laughs> now this is the God that I started to follow. The one that I know is sitting right here beside me, talking to me. I'm listening for yeah. His voice now, not yeah. trying to remember the scripture. Yeah. Right. But the scripture say exactly. hey, that's religion. Remembering scripture and, and, and feeding it back is religion. When you hear voice, God's voice, now you you walking by faith. Come on, brother. Come on. Hey. It, it took a minute to get here. I ain't gonna tell no lie. <laughs> you know. If if I can say this, we we tend to uh, this this movement here, this this uh, this grace movement has focused on Jesus dying for our sins. Uh huh. That our sins you. have been paid for. Yeah. They're leaving off that he rose. Go ahead on. From the dead. Yeah. And is seated at the right hand. And yeah. that he is the mediator. And that he sent the comforter Hallelujah. to say whatever he said. I ain't got to quit. Quit. So, <laughs> I got to turn off, too. <laughs> so so we're, we're, <laughs> we got to be mindful. Right. Don't, don't stop at, yeah, my sins have been paid for. Crazy. <laughs> we got to, we got to carry on to the other part and he rose and is seated uh -huh. and all power has been given unto him God, which has word. been given unto us right, right. so that is where we oh, have yeah. to 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 start realizing that uh that's where we at brother 
got stuck at the cross. We got to get past that. We got stuck at the cross. Yeah. So, 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 just, just so for witness for scripture, oh. look at Romans chapter five. Romans chapter five. One second. <laughs> Romans five, verse number ten. You just look at the Bible. Oh. Romans five, ten. What, what's that? Like the cross. <laughs> Bring it up now. <laughs> you see, all we've ever talked about and all we've ever been disciples was about his death. Yeah. Oh. But that, that one verse in Romans chapter 5, verse number 10 says, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, mm -hmm. that's the finished works of Christ. Yes. Much. Go ahead now. <laughs> Much more being reconciled shall we be saved by his life. Yes. That is the ongoing work of Christ. Yes. Yeah. The finished work on the cross and being crucified and put to death is his death that brings us back. But after being brought back, if we don't live differently than we did before, then his death has been in vain. Woo. So in, after his death, he was raised up, Peter said. And on the day of Pentecost, he was having received the gift of the Holy Ghost.